Glass Onion is the best movie of the year, and it's better than Knives Out. So to all of the Ryan Johnson haters, y'all can suck it. Okay, I'm actually frustrated because I did an entire 20-minute review on Glass Onion. And it just all of a sudden just told me that, oh, this file is corrupted. So unfortunately, I have to redo my entire review. But Glass Onion, to me, is the best movie of the year. It's now on Netflix. I apologize if I wasn't able to do this review two months ago when it came out in theaters. But hey, I now saw it and I want to give my review. Originally, I wasn't going to do it because I'm like, I'm already too late. But I just thought this movie was just a masterpiece in every way. Now, first, let me get my one negative out the way. And that is Ethan Hawke is in this movie, but he's only there for a cameo and he's only there for one minute. But the thing is, I didn't see the trailer or at least I haven't seen the trailer in months. So when I saw Ethan Hawke, I'm like, oh, shit, this is a talented actor. He was in Black Phone, The Purge, uh, uh, that Moon Knight, of course. And this this is a tremendously talented actor who on his good day can give you one of the best performances you've ever seen. And he's only there for one scene and then he leaves and he's never to be seen. And there's not even an answer as to why he's there. And I thought that was a little silly because I'm like, bro, you got Ethan Hawke only to do a cameo. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, don't give my hopes up that high but then again it was my fault for not having seen the trailers but yeah i mean that was that's my literally only negative ryan johnson was able to make a perfect murder mystery story first of all this story is not told linear so that's gonna be a little confusing but once you know everything that happens it's it's done to perfection the the murder mystery in this movie is done so perfect that once you find out who the imposter is and by the way no spoilers but once you find out who the imposter is yes this is among us reference there's actually a scene in the movie where detective blanc is playing <laughs> among us but once you find out who the imposter is it's like it makes sense and i love that, that that's what they did in the first knives out movie where you understood you know who was the imposter and then in this movie they do the same thing and while I love that first movie, I think this movie was better in every way. Now, first, let me give my main positive. Daniel Craig as Detective Blanc was amazing. I think he honestly is one of my favorite characters in all movies right now, at least current modern movies. He's going to be a household name in a couple of years. You know, the way people look at characters like Sherlock and Watson, you know, I think that's going to be the way we see Detective Blanc. I feel like a lot of future kids right now, they're going to grow up knowing this guy, knowing this character, and he's going to be a household name, just like, probably not to the level of like a James Bond, but definitely kind of like, I would say to Bourne, you know, Jason Bourne. I think that kind of level is where we should expect Detective Blanc. But Daniel Craig was amazing to me. I said this in Knives Out, and I'll say it again for Glass Onion, Detective Blanc that role of that character continues to be Daniel Craig's best performance. I know he's played James Bond. I know he's been in amazing stellar performances in other movies, but honestly, I think, you know, the knives out movies is genuinely his best performances. I think these are his best movies. And to me, I want to see Blanc continue. And we know he will because Netflix bought out the rights to the knives out franchise. And we know that Ryan Johnson is going to continue to make more because that is part of the deal. For those who don't know, Ryan Johnson is contractually obligated to make more Knives Out movies if he has any ideas. But they all have to star Daniel Craig and I'm all in for it. I cannot wait for them. And the good thing about these movies is this isn't like the Dark Knight trilogy where you need to watch one movie to get the other. This These are individual stories. And that's one thing I love. And to get into my other favorite thing besides Daniel Craig's character is the entire cast was honestly breathtaking when i saw knives out you had a lot of tremendous great talented actors like michael shannon chris evans and of course the first time i had ever seen her in a movie anna de armas you had a lot of great actors and the cast was so great they were all so unique they all, they all had different personalities and the entire time you kind of struggled to find who is the the killer who is the one who did the bad thing and i love that glass onion not only exceed, you know, not only did, did it meet that criteria, but it exceeded it in every way. Because in this movie, right from the get-go, the first ten minutes of this movie, you understand these characters. They're all so different. They're all so unique. You have a politician. You have a former model. You have an Elon Musk billionaire. You have a YouTuber. You have so many different personalities that's unique. And I think that's one benefit this movie has over the other one. The other one, the characters were a family, so it kind of made it like it, it was interesting. 
But I like that the difference between this one and the other one is that that one was a family. So all those people were connected in that way. But this one was a friend group. And you could see they were truly friends by the way they talked. And the cast, you had great actors like Edward Noy and Dave Bautista. You know, you had a lot of Leslie Odom Jr. You had a lot of tremendously great actors. And <laughs> I I love that. And oh, I forgot Kate Hudson's. And, this, and, and every one of these characters is so unique and so different. But every time they're on screen, you're just interested. You're you're just amazed by how great of characters they are. And that's the thing this movie tops the other one. That they're all far more unique as a cast than they were in the first movie. I think the, one of the reasons is because in the first movie they were a family. But in the second one, it was a friend group. And I feel like... That's kind of how it feels like in real life. Your friends tend to feel a little different from one another. They're unique while you're a family. Well, yes, everyone's unique. You kind of feel like you're together because you have that one similarity amongst y'all. While friends is, you know, individual strangers who came together. And I, and I love that the movie does that. Uh, and the cast was just so good. You know, it, it was amazing. And this movie really introduced me to the actors known as Janelle Monae. I did not know who this girl is. I don't know what other movie she's in, but this movie really introduced me. And one thing I love about Janelle's character is she kind of feels like Anna de Armas' character in the first one, where you have these two co-op characters, co-leads. You had Daniel Craig and then Anna de Armas in the first one. Now in the second one, you have Janelle. And what I love about these two characters is they serve to be kind of the, the normal person amongst such a great detective because with Blanc you have this incredible detective who knows every detail and that's the, the thing I love about this movie every time he's on screen you know this guy can solve any case and even immediately in the beginning of the movie you know this guy is going to solve the case he's not going to think about it he's not going to maybe crack the code he is going to crack the code and I love that the movie does that and that's the thing I like about Janelle's character is that she feels like the normal person amongst somebody who's so intelligent that it kind of feels like she is the viewer's eyes. And that's the same thing Anna de Armas was in the first movie where they serve to to be kind of like what the audience is thinking. They serve to kind of be normal next to such an intelligent uh, man, you know, with Detective Blanc. And, and I love that. So her, I'm going to be looking out for her career. She was a tremendously great actress in this movie. So I'm going to look forward to whatever she does in the future. But honestly, the cast was just amazing. There was a couple of cameos. Uh, you had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I, I was surprising. Same thing with Serena Williams. But the one that really kind of disappointed me was Ethan Hawke because I had expected that he was going to be in it more. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Maybe they were teasing something else, but he plays Miles' assistant, who's Edward Norton's character. So I don't think that kind of character would play out future. But the film, the way this movie is shot, the editing of this movie, they're all amazing. The, like, first, the cinematography is all great. The way they shot is great. But, man, hands down to the editors. Uh, the, edit the editing of movies rarely ever gets talked about. And this movie, honestly, the editors got to give themselves a pat on the back because the way they were able to make the story wasn't linear the entire time. And it kind of chumped back and forth at times. I, I love that the movie did that. And I thought it was just done to pure perfection. And truly, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Editing, I always appreciate good editors because I myself am a lazy fuck. I mean, just look at this video right now. It's not really all that hyper edited. But I tend to be more normal, more relaxed when it comes to my editing. But I tend to appreciate great editing. And Knives Out, or not Knives Out, Glass Onion did to perfection. By the way, the name Glass Onion fits. I know it sounds stupid. That's what I thought originally. But... Glass Onion is truly like it's there's a reason why it's called that. And once you find out that reason, it's like you understand it completely. And I thought just I, I, I'm left speechless because this movie genuinely, I think, will go down as my favorite movie of 2022. We had a lot of great movies like Avatar Way of Water, The Batman, Top Gun Maverick, uh, The Menu. You had tremendously great films. And looking back at them all, I think that i'm gonna have to put glass onion at the top now i'm gonna be doing a stream at the end of the year probably the 31st on new year's eve i'm considering doing kind of like this award ceremony where i put my favorite movies of the year my favorite actors my favorite comic book movies of the year i'm gonna kind of do subsections and i do definitely think that glass onion as of now stands there and we're at the end of the year i don't i mean i gotta watch puss and boots the last wish there's a couple of movies i still need to catch up on but I definitely think as of now, Glass Onion is number one without any competition. 
But no, I, I am so excited to see Netflix continue this story. Knives Out, uh, you know, Ryan Johnson, ever since Last Jedi, has proven himself to be such a amazing, astonishing director who deserves a lot more work. And I'm so glad he was able to build his own thing because I know a lot of people hated him after Last Jedi. I remember hearing idiots say, oh, Ryan Johnson's a bad director. Ryan Johnson doesn't understand how to make movies. But, bro, there's it's not a fluke anymore. Knives Out was perfect. Glass Onion was perfect. All these movies that he's made after Last Jedi have been perfect. And to me, I think he's just kind of proven that he's a phenomenal director outside of Star Wars. And, and you know what? If he was to do something Star Wars related, I wouldn't mind it because to me... He's a phenomenal a a director. Even though I think Last Jedi had its flaws, I still thought the way the movie was filmed was done. I think ultimately the big issue is he was given characters like Luke and 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 uh you know these these star characters like Leia, Luke, and I feel like it's much harder to write a movie with established characters. While when he can make his own, it's kind of like there's no pre existing idea of what a character could be. And I feel like that's what he that's where he shines best when it's a character no one knows and he's able to do whatever he wants with them. And that's what I love about Knives Out and Glass Onion. And I also like that he keeps Blanc a mystery. Like you don't know much about Blanc besides he's the world's greatest murder mystery detective. And that's about it. You don't know his past. You don't know who his love interest is. You don't know anything about him. And and I like that the movie does that. Uh and again, I'm looking forward to seeing Blanc crack more codes. And I really like that. And I like that the movie 1000% understands what it is. Also, another thing I got to add to this review is this movie was clearly filmed during the pandemic. As in the movie, they keep referencing COVID. And at some point in the movie, they're wearing masks. They're talking about how it's been a long time uh, since they've done any kind of you know, public thing because of social distancing. And I kind of like that the movie adds that. I know it wasn't by choice, obviously, <laughs> because they were filming during COVID, but it's still done really well. I, I think they, the way they were able to handle that kind of issue was nicely done. I also feel like it adds more to humanity of these characters, the more realism, because you kind of relate because, of course, us as humans for a long for for a while, we were wearing masks. We weren't able to go to our jobs. We weren't able to do anything for a while. And ultimately, I think this movie just it's just really good and I, I like that the setting i like everything about the movie that and that's something i also want to appreciate about glass Sung is it went very different from uh, knives out where knives out it was taking place in a mansion with the family this one is on an island it's on an island with this nice home with a bunch of friends who are really close to one another and i like that and i really really like this movie for that and again the characters all the characters were so diverse and so unique that you just were interested every second with these characters and you just wanted to see a lot more of them. They felt human. They all made mistakes. Some of them think of themselves highly. And I like that the movie does that, especially because a lot of these people are rich. And so they kind of make fun of rich stereotypes. Like, of course, you had like your Elon Musk billionaire. You had your YouTuber. You had your politician. And I like that. Now, I... I do wonder how they're going to be able to top the next movie because you had these two great sets of cast. That I'm genuinely now concerned for the, whoever's up next because with Glass Onion, you were able to top that. But I don't know if you can do it with this sequel. And that actually leaves me more excited because now I'm excited to see who are they going to cast? Are we going to get fucking, uh, fucking Robert De Niro in this? Are we going to get, you know, who are we going to get? And that leaves me very fascinated for the future of this franchise and I'm so glad Netflix picked it up and said hey Ryan Johnson you do your thing we'll fund your movies and yeah and I like that and unfortunately I wasn't able to see it in theaters but of course for money saving reasons I just wasn't able to go but I would have loved to have seen this movie in theaters but I still appreciate watching it in the comfort of my home on Netflix currently and I think it's also the best Netflix related thing that came out this year I know uh, Stranger Things came out I know, Squid, no, Squid Game was last year, I think. I almost said Squid Game, but uh, we had Dahmer come out. And I think that by far Glass Onion has been my favorite thing that came out this year, especially on on Netflix. And I can't think of any other movie or show that I just preferred over Glass Onion because Glass Onion was just that stellar. Knives Out, I believe, came out in 2018. I don't remember. That was my favorite movie of the year. I think that was the same year uh, the, the Quiet Place came out, so probably not. But overall, 
this movie was just perfect. It was great from beginning to end. I just love this entire movie. I think this movie was pure perfection. And again, my only criticism was that little nitpick of Ethan Hawke not being in the movie. But, eh, I, I got over it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this review. Hope you all enjoyed it. Whatever it is you guys think, let us know in the comment section down below. Do you agree, disagree? Have you seen the movie? Have you not? Whatever it is, let us know in the comment section down below. And after you've seen the movie, you come back to this video and let me know in the comments what did you think about the movie. And that way we can have a great civil conversation about Glass Onion.